Rita Rita Conway. Please welcome your winners from Denmark on the three seeds, Leah Greyback and Piers Christianson. Once again, Rita will present the medals and winners' checks to Matthias and Lina.
60 in the world. The Bulgarians, winners last week at the Welsh International, winners of the Dutch Grand Prix. Bulgarian International, Russian Open Grand Prix, Spanish International, and Oil International. Of course, we have the Stephanie European Games gold medalist from Baku in the summer. Welcome back. Here we are for the women's doubles final. And we've got the Stuiva sisters up against Hansen and Lipson of Denmark. Um, should be in for a really good final here. Um, top class, high ranked players in the Stuiva sisters. 14 in the world, so everyone in Dublin is set to see some great Bampton here today. A little bit of history too here, Dan. I'm not sure if you've spoken about it already, but these four know each other from juniors very, very well. Uh, the story of us beating the Danes en route to their European junior title. Oh, seems like a long time ago now, 2013, but uh, that was in Ankara in Turkey. You'd have to say, Mark, since then there's been a big difference in what both pairs have done and, and the Stoivas have really, really pushed on far now. Top 20 in the world in ladies' doubles and really able to compete at a, at a high level. Yeah, and top 20 in the world really without uh, much assault in the Super Series tournaments. Why? Lack of funding. You know, they don't have the money to travel to Asia to play all the big Super Series events. But in terms of circuit participation and their effectiveness and efficiency on the circuit, really there hasn't been anyone to match them uh, in, in recent years. He's going 
going to take a lot of hard work here from the Danes if they're going to try and get through the defence of the Stoeva sisters. It's for me how they can just will her out the attack and then suddenly two, three shots and the shot's on the floor. Both sisters able to hit with great power. Um, definitely, we've seen it before with Stephanie in the singles as well. She can cover a lot of court very strong and, and, and a very good singles player as well, Mark. Yeah, stop playing singles uh, this qualification period. Bulgaria probably just uh, clearing the way really for Linda Zichiri, uh to get that Olympic spot. Uh, of course, Linda also battling with Petya and Edelcheva. Mm -hmm. uh, more ways than one, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's for another day's discussion. But uh, certainly, Stephanie concentrating on her doubles for this qualification period. They've got a great unit in terms of strength in, in women. And, uh, it'll be interesting to see how their outfit does in the European Women's Team Championship. Oh, yeah, certainly. They have, they have the personnel to win a medal. It's whether they get the politics correct. Not only uh, can the two Stoivas play good doubles, you've got the option of putting Stephanie in the singles, you've got options there in the, in the ladies' doubles. Petya, we've seen her go a long way in ladies' doubles. So um, uh, definitely a very good outfit. girls did gain a lot of traction I know back home in Bulgaria after their victory in Baku in the European Games and, uh, which they thoroughly deserved and really they would be hot favorites to win this title without dropping a set yeah, the whole week I think I've seen that they had a women in sport award from Bulgaria as, as some of the best female athletes in their country and it's great to see Bampton being recognized at that level in the country and these girls have certainly merited that in the results. And in Baku, they were unstoppable. I'm not sure if you've noticed recently, Daniel, but they're now traveling alone. Gunther Huber was the coach and is the coach. Uh, I've, I've heard nothing to uh, the contrary. I'm not sure what's going on, but Gunther hasn't been around for the last uh, uh, month or two. Okay, uh, I haven't uh, noticed that, Mark. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, what, what the reason behind that is. But the girls are well able and they're experienced enough at this stage that they can go out there and without a coach control the game. They're a good body language and for two family members playing together as in our family we, we well know they, they have very good communication. I remember interviewing them very, very early in their junior career, no English, and now, you know, they've developed, they've grown, they've matured, become much more comfortable in an interview situation, and uh, two really nice girls to boot, you know, very, very approachable, always willing to talk. In terms of uh, European players that are outside the big countries like Denmark, and the traditional in the past, England, you can see that they've taken the ladies' doubles to so much work into their physical conditioning. Relentless, you know. I think it's almost seven days a week these girls are working and working hard. So as expected, I think, Daniel, uh, it's the story of his sisters who really get the traction early in this first game, leading 11-5 into the interval. And a lot of really tough work. <laughs> you see straight away Matthias Christiansen is back out on court coaching the, the women's doubles after winning the mixed doubles. Yeah, the, the Danes have their, their work cut out here. Um, it's impressive that they've come back here again this year, final again. Um, but this year it's definitely a step up in level. And you're playing a pair that are top 20 in the world, that are really hunting after a top 10 position. You can see every time that their ranking goes up, these girls are putting it out there and they're saying they're they're not free to say that they want to be top 10 in the world and you wouldn't bet against them getting there if they can get the funding right and yeah. get the opportunity to play in the big events 
they're certainly uh, they're certainly gone up a level from the circuit level of the ladies doubles. Yeah, absolutely. We're lucky on the circuit that they're still uh, you know still playing on the Babington Europe circuit. They have been great supporters of the circuit events and. Uh, Comfortably winning Grand Prix now also Grand Prix gold. So yeah, the next level beckons. There you see uh, Stephanie changing it. First of all, open up with the big smashes and then the cross reverse. So the girls have to be able to cover the attack and they also have to be able to cover the more technical shots to the front of the board. So wouldn't begrudge Chris Jansen his job out there as coach. Yeah, that's good from Ricky. Yeah. She's going to have to be positive like that coming forward, attacking the net. Feature of the story of his play is also they're so resolute in defense. Everything comes back. And then when they do get on the attack, as you alluded to already, the power in the in the in their right arms is really uh, phenomenal. You can hear the shuttle pinging off the racket. You have good experience in seeing them a lot, Mark. If there was something in their defense, would there be someone that you would pick on, or are both players equally strong in defense, or what, what do you think is there? What would be your tactic right there against these girls? I've seen. Well, I, I've seen. The girls were quite predictable up to about a year ago. Uh, Gabriella used to come to the net and Stephanie was more comfortable from the rear court. All of a sudden, and uh, so, yeah, a year ago people would have tried to isolate Stephanie uh, or, or, or Gabby in the rear court a little bit. But now she has improved mm. so much also. We have to remember that in their junior days it was Stephanie who was the, the good story of a sister. Uh, Gabriella was just... You know, and no disrespect, but was almost there along for the ride. But she has improved phenomenally to the to the point now where uh, they're equally as comfortable. And that's really difficult when you're out there and you're yeah. playing against a pair, and you think there's no weak link here. Yeah, you're trying to find that that weak link, and you know, gradually at hard work and over time, those weak links have uh, evaporated. Yes, I can see some of the Japanese pairs wearing them down, uh, matching them physically. Uh, rally, 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 rally. As strong in defence, and it's when maybe when the story of his sisters come up against that, when they've you know uh, with those really top pairs from Asia who can match them physically, that then it becomes uh, becomes a battle of will that they maybe uh, would not be used to. Yeah, definitely. You see, like uh, stereotypically, the only European pairs have been able to really compete with the Asian ladies doubles pairs have been a little bit different. Yeah. Like uh, Pedersen and Kumail Yule, Ryder Yule, yeah. they've got that presence on court, they're big, they can create angles, they're winning in the first three shots. So if the Stoivas are going to be able to compete, as you said, with the Japanese and the Chinese, then they have to really make sure that their physical level is at an all-time high. Yeah. And they are, they are really doing something to improve on that and you can see that at circuit level they're well ahead and they're going to have to just keep working hard on that if they're going to compete at the, at the top top level I think it's no coincidence also that uh, you know the level has continued to get to rise both in their technical abilities and their physical abilities now that Stephanie is concentrating on doubles uh, you know that distraction of singles and in singles, you know, she has the potential to be top 20 in the world, you know, uh, 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 as a goal and then push on further if she so wished. But without that distraction of, of, of singles, uh, mixing singles with doubles, you know, it has benefited their women's doubles also. I think if you're going to be getting to finals week in, week out, uh, in one discipline, then you really have to be focused on it. Uh, it's too difficult to measure up with two. But I, I definitely also think that uh, Stephanie would have huge potential to be a European medalist in singles if, if she was to, to focus on that. But certainly, ladies doubles is the way they're going to go the furthest in the world rankings. 
choice was all also made a little bit easier she picked up a bad ankle injury uh, you could see her right ankle now over the last weeks and months the strapping has become less and less and less but it's still there she's still wearing that little ankle brace but she got a bad ankle injury about uh, oh, approximately about a year ago and that sort of helped in the decision okay i cannot do both As I said, Stoyevas have made this final without dropping a set. The Danes came through in three games against Nystad and Wingberg. That's the first game to the Stoyevas and comfortable Daniel. I have to say that the pattern there was both players on attack working really hard. The Danes giving everything that they had in attack but feeling to get through the defense of the Stoyevas. And then once the Stoeva sisters got the chance to attack. Three, four shots and it's on the ground, so it's going to be an uphill battle here for the Danes. Maybe they can change something here, maybe they can mix it up a little bit and break down the concentration and get back into the match, but so far it's looking comfortable for the Bulgarians. Danes, of course, beat uh, Sarah Boyle and Rachel Dara en route to this final. A good learning experience for the girls. Yeah, I was lucky enough to sit behind the board of young English players and um, definitely a big improvement for, for those girls Sarah and Rachel to compete against the Danes uh, leading at 11-8 in the second game uh, they, they were able to compete in the rallies but the, the strength of the Danes was just a little bit too much Here we go, second set. Uh, Gabriela Stuiva to serve. positive signs there. That time the Danes move in the Bulgarian side to side. A little bit more speed on the shuttle in their defense and the Stoeve is making a mistake. Positive start from the Danes. Two love leads. Julie Finna Ibsen, another piece of useless information, also a very, very good golfer, uh, actually a top golfer in, in, in Denmark. And there's actually, Daniel, a few players who, who mix golf with uh, badminton. It seems, to, it seems to demand the same qualities. Madness, would that be one of them? Yeah. Could be, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure it's that eye hand coordination yeah. and uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely maybe in the past. Bampton seen as a winter sport and golf seen as a summer sport. So, uh, Mark, are you tell me you're picking up the golfing? Is that it? Oh, I, I I tried golf many moons ago and learned very quickly. First of all, it was too expensive to warrant uh, to even uh, to warrant me even continuing. And second of all, I was rubbish. game plan here you see from the Danes this time they're, they're moving the shuttle around much better in their defense mixing it up there with the power smashes from Pearson and the clears but she certainly has the power to put it away as well Mark mm. see the other thing about Denmark and you know it's just it's just that word Denmark they come into matches and you know we have to realize that Yuli and Ricky are not uh, national team uh, Danish players these are club players Yuli was a member of the Danish junior team that won the uh, European Juniors, but effectively every Danish team does that anyway. But they come into a match knowing that they're Danish, and they it's 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 that uh, that whole mindset that you know even if they go down, they believe they can come back. They believe they can win. You can definitely see body language. 
which is very good. Losing the first game, 21 10. Straight away, they're back up there, they're competing, they're trying to do something different. It's a really good example of how you should come back into the game if you're, if you're down one. A bit of luck for Gabby. You gotta make your look, and of course, some players practice that return of serve. Feeling the second set, uh, the Danes have adapted well. Maybe in the first game, because in this tournament they haven't really come up against the speed, they were a little bit shell shocked. Uh, the difference in level, obviously, from the girls and the speed and the attack, but this game they've been much more settled. They've moved the shuttle around much better in defense. The Stoivas now have to work a little bit harder to, to win the rallies. Gabby, the eldest of the sisters, I think by one year. Quite a tall young lady, but she does come to the net with that racket up. It is an imposing figure. How familiar would you be with her in the Danish league, Mark? I really don't know much about her, to be honest. We've seen a lot more of Ibsen in the singles, and mm. she's been around, so she's well known, and uh, she played very well in the singles in this tournament, beating Karen Snaza. In a, in a difficult match. In a difficult match where, where, where Snaza tried to break her uh, mentally as well as anything going down on court with that ankle injury and then miraculously continuing on. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, she, she stayed focused. She played well, but then uh, couldn't bring the job home. Of course, a really good singles final coming up here short, uh, shortly, the women's singles. Another Dane, of course, Talia Kroda against Germany's Olga Konen. Six and the Danes now looking to go into the mid-game interval if they can get this point and it certainly would be nice to have a five-point advantage. There it is, 11-6. Big change in this match, the Danes looking much more positive. Hansen pushing forward onto the net, getting the lift for Ibsen and Ibsen powering through quite often. Uh, I have to say the speed on the defense has been much better for the Danes this time. Even the Stoeve is li much less time on the shuttle, and it's been a different game in the second set. I, I, you, you see that quite often, Mark. Sometimes the players win the first game quite easily, and then when they go out to the second, they're a little bit complacent, and suddenly they're four or five points down, and they're chasing the game. Yeah, and that to me is where the real value of a coach comes in. Yeah. Uh, at that point where you say, girls, you're winning, now go out and stay focused. Rather than, uh, as we've seen in this game, the story has just drifted a little bit at the beginning of that second game. I think they're back. They're back in it. and uh, But they're now, it, it's an uphill battle to win, to win the title in two games. Ah. It's just been much more positive at the end. The body language has been better. They've been more aggressive coming forward onto the net and working for each other. And they're competing so well in this game. Dean. Definitely we've seen some great movement from Hansen coming forward, taking on the net. Ibsen powering the shuttle down from behind and that, that tactic's working for them. In defense she is the one that's making the move forward and she's the one that's controlling the net. And this has been a happy hunting ground for them. I know they were beaten in last year's final, but you know uh, the, the memories coming back onto court are good. You know, you get to a final and they don't play that off together as a pair on the circuit. So uh, I think maybe just a handful of tournaments this year. See that again, Mark. See how Hansen is 
because every time getting that chance to come forward she drives and she's firing fast this is so much more aggressive yeah they, they, they certainly up the tempo you can see it there again it was this time it was Ibsen spotting the opening coming forward Flat serve easy mistake there I think if the story of is want to win it in two, I think this run of points, if they can get a run of points on uh, Stephanie's serve, is crucial. I don't think they can go any further behind. There you see it again. The Danes are just using the straight drive and everything's coming past the front court player. Smash is too powerful, too flat, not enough variation from the Stoivas, making it very easy for the Danes to use the counter attack. of the story of this, you know, working hard in defense, everything coming back with breaks the will if you're on the attack. You feel it should be over in one and two and three smashes and it just keeps coming back. Well, you looked at that rally there and you wouldn't have really faulted the dance. They did everything right. This is where they have to keep that belief, keep moving forward because the tiredness is creeping in because it is a physical game. Got to use that five point advantage now. Good job. I think the Danes, as we've identified, but they can also get a lot of traction by putting in the flick serve, especially against Gabby. If there is a weakness, is that she's a little bit slow coming back on the flick. Every and rarely gets really a good attacking shot off a flick serve. She tends to hold the racket too on a sort of a panhandle grip on the return of serve. So that push when the flick comes in, she's not very quick at changing that grip back to uh, the, the standard grip. And it's these small technical issues are the things that will make the big difference when it comes to the top level. all the hard work fortunate but uh, this game so far Hanson has done everything right she's been pushing forward she's been coming onto the net she's been looking for the attack they're not getting the result that she wanted but she's certainly making the right moves Dane's in a commanding position Dan 17-11 ahead okay trading by one game the story is just looking a little bit lacking plan B uh, lacking direction, certainly lacking direction. Tactically, they haven't dealt very well with the Danish using that counter attack against them coming forward. They felt almost under pressure, shuttle coming at them very fast. They could have maybe used uh, a few clears, open up the court again, play out the longer rallies, because I think in the longer rallies, they, they have the ones that have come out on top. What will happen? And what we know will happen if it does go to the third game is we we know who are the physically stronger side when it comes to conditioning. And if it goes into, extends to an hour, then your money has to start going on, on the story of us uh, to pull it through. I have to agree with you, Mark. I've Definitely. seen it so many, even even this year against the likes of uh, Peak and Mushkins, who are number nine in the world, where it just couldn't last the pace of the story of us. And you, could, you can already see it in uh, Hansen that uh, she's starting to look tired now. She's worked so well, she's been so aggressive coming onto the net. Every time she's had to hit the shuttle, she's gone up there and she's put the effort in. So Defense. Gabby. The 
against Divers. This is where they're comfortable. And Stephanie's controlling the, the baseline, getting those smashes in. She's also got a little bit of variety there. Yeah. Uh, she's able to put in a soft one. But Gabby, when she's at the back, tends to just go raw power. Yeah, it'd be nice to see a little bit more variation from, from the rear court, but uh, it's a great engine that Stephanie has that you can keep using the power, keep hitting, keep bringing Gabby into the front court. But a lot of heavy smashing from both sides and not a, not a lot of variation. And that's going to wear all four girls down, but as we've alluded to, you would put your house on the fact that the Stuyves would come through in three, just... If they're evenly matched technically, if they're e e evenly matched in every way, it's physically where the Stoivers will pull it through in the end. Definitely. This is a good game, a good game from the Danes from their perspective after losing the first one. Quite easily, 21-10. Uh, very impressed with how they've turned the, the game around. But second game they've looked like a different pair they've come up a level they've been able to adapt to the pace and i definitely think that's down to them playing quarterfinal semi-final they didn't have that same power that same pace coming to them so it was that shell shock in the first game where now they're comfortable and it's going to be a very even match still even start to grind them down this is where it starts this is where the grind starts Clever switch by Hansen there. Ibsen saw the gap, went for it, but she didn't have her racket ready. All of a sudden, they just trail by two. Relentless power. The lift's getting shorter. In the end, easy winner. You know, from trailing 6 1, Dan, they were trailing 13 5. They were trailing 17 uh, 13. Now back to within one. Clever there by the Danes. They're now taking that break. They need to break the momentum. Um, I feel like it's, it's definitely changed in favour of the Stoeva sisters again and if it was to go to third set there were, there's only going to be one winner here but um, it may end in two very weak serve oh and the push was called out oh, that's a poor mistake <laughs> that could be that, that's a uh, that's decisive changer, point yeah yeah, yeah. Game point, and I think Daniel, you, you would feel that they have to take it at first time of asking. Serving Uli Finn Oh, a high serve mark. Yeah. There's the tiredness. That is the tired mistake. And I think of all the four girls, it's Ricky who will get, and she's showing the signs of fatigue already. You see that after the, the big rally in the middle of the game there. Really out of position. <laughs> oh, can't fault the determination no, there, Mark. Certainly not. But what it means, Daniel, is that the story of his sisters have championship point. Ah, oh, well played, Ricky. Well, there's that fighting Danish spirit. We're used to that, the Vikings coming to Ireland back in the past. <laughs> They're returning again. 
And then the poor flick serve, free point back to the Stoivers. And yet again, championship point. Epson hitting that shuttle so well on attack and relentless, not giving away. Yeah, good conviction on those smashes. Not the best bump that we've seen, but certainly can't fault any of Forger's determination. But it's a positive development in badminton, certainly in women doubles over the last period of few years. It's gone so much more attacking. Yeah. Certainly from in Europe. The physical side of the game has improved so much. So another game point. You serve. This time it's Juli Finn serving. Yeah, Best serve. And that's out and they've done it. You know, and they're happy about that. <laughs> Little hand clap between the two Danes and woof, they barely got that one over the line, as I said. One point trading by six or seven points. And I think the story of this whole field have let it slip. Yeah, that, that game, but uh, certainly the match is looking strongly in their favour. The Danes looking more and more tired and the Stoivas are still looking quite comfortable in the physical side of things. But you've got to hand it to the Danes there. They really changed that match around. Much more aggressive in their defence. Hansen coming forward. Ibsen attacking with full power. And then Hansen cutting out the net. That in that formation they're dangerous. It'll be interesting to see now if they can use this break to their advantage and then come out strong. Because in a third game both pairs will be quite tense and that tenseness can sometimes change the physical side of the match. Yeah, and again, uh, you know, I'm I'm really observing the story of us here, looking at them during this interval. I'm looking to see what their body language is like. I'm looking, really looking to see how, how they're functioning without a coach. You know, um, still all to play for. You know, they must know that they have the physical capabilities to power this one through. Uh, yes, they've just lost that second game. It's 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 the Danes who are on their toes. The, the only thing that can change this match around is if the Danes get an early lead because then the Stoivas might tighten up and then the game becomes close. If the Stoivas get off to a good start, if this one love lead now, if they get off to a good start, then it's, it's only, it can only go one way really, Mark. Yeah. Cast iron smash down the middle. looking just a little bit red faced <laughs> you know she's having to work really hard I saw that in the middle of the second game it's, uh, she's much more comfortable at the front of the court Ibsen has the power she has the stamina to keep working at the back so if Louise can get forward Ricky Ricky can get forward then that, that, that would change the match so many Hansons <laughs> I think Hansen is to Denmark as Murphy is to Ireland <laughs> yeah See you again. Hansen making that block. That brings Ibsen into the game where she can attack from the back end. In that position, they're really good. And they can compete with the Stoivas. Yeah, of course, uh, Yuli certainly has that single stamina. But we also remember that she's played singles. <laughs> uh, and she got, what, the quarterfinals. So she's played a lot of matches this week. clever that time, Ibsen hit with the half smash, got the short lift and then another one with a half smash 
and just definitely that time left him wide. Just bouncing off the net court. In the past, uh, Lady Stubbles have had that stigma that it's not as exciting as the, the other disciplines to watch, but certainly in the, in the last years it's become much more exciting and it's become much more physical. So you can see there's there's a lot of good attack and play on both sides and, and I think the crowd are enjoying this match. I think the problem we've had mostly on the circuit with the women's doubles this year is just the lack of depth in the draws. Uh, where you're not really getting the really good matches until semi-finals and finals, unlike women's singles, even men's singles, where we saw Antonsen against Malkov in the fourth oh. round here. So, uh, yeah, certainly the draws need a little bit more uh, depth. Cross smash. That kind of variation, that off smash across the body, has to be hit well, has to be hit with power, but when it's used correctly, it's dangerous. Tiredness, yeah, you know, and uh, these small little errors creep in. Five seven could have been six seven and steady at five. I feel a three point margin is a, it's a hard one to get back in a third game. That was a really good exchange there at the start of that rally between Ibsen and Gabby Stoiva. Gabby in defense using her forearm strength to keep the shuttle in play and keep it in the rally. Ibsen unable to put it through her at the front. And, and that again shows you the, the physical side that the Bulgarians have. They're able to pull back the defense and they're able to take the power coming at them. Yeah, I think certainly the fuel tank. Ricky Hansen is starting to head into reserve. You see, uh, Yuli Phillips and is trying to talk to her between rallies and keep keeping her going. Ah, tired mistakes. Tired mistakes. Yeah. In the second game, all those moves that Hansen made in defence, where she drove and came forward and killed the net, was what changed the match. And you can see when that's not working for the Danes, then they can't compete in the match because they're not getting the lift for Ibsen and she's not able to power through the girls. So a break, and maybe a, a small chance, but it's certainly looking much more in favour of the Bulgarians at the moment. 40 minutes gone. Uh, as is the norm, change of ends in the third set. A little bit more positive just now the body language a little bit more relaxed uh, the Stoivas I think they uh, feel a little bit uh, feel confident that they can bring this one home they're back out on court nice and quick they're ready to go you see the Stoivas want to drive the screw home here there, you see the small break mm -hmm. when Hansen is feeling fresh and she's getting an opportunity to smash. She has the power and she's strong in her defense, but it's just that long game is it's taking its toll on the so far. Game positive from Ipsen. There's that fight in Danish spirit coming through again, Mark. Yeah, she's such a positive player. It's singles also. She loves, you know, loves to be positive, loves to get on the attack. Then has the awareness and the experience at this stage. You know, she's not a junior anymore. Be patient. Look for the openings. Look to be 
heading out was so <sighs> flat from Stephanie. Good change of pace on the last one though. Fam takes the pace off and then the tired legs not able to get to the net. Almost happy just to lift now, Mark. Yeah. It's not coming down with as much speed and they're able to lift the shuttle around, so. Story of his, of course, Daniel, going for their seventh title, title of the year. And not just any old titles, you know, they've won Grand Prix and high quality challenges in Olympic years. Uh, phenomenal feat. That's uh, it's, it's just um, such an impressive record. And that, that's what you need in the, these Olympic qualifying years. You need to go out there, you need to stamp your authority on the, on the circuit, and they've certainly done it. Looks like um, the Danes may have to return one more year, Mark, if they're going to yeah. try and get this title. Of course, that's that's going also in addition to those seven, six or seven titles, European Games gold medals. And you'd have to say it was a hugely successful event this year, and um, it mimics certainly that. Olympic feel. I think there are many players around Europe who have regretted not going. Back row. A lot of players with the bank in history and uh, I think the European games have become stronger and stronger and uh, yeah, a lot of people have got their name in the history books now. Yeah. Certainly for the first one so and uh, it was nice to see that you had those world-class players like Matthias Bo and mm -hmm. Karsten Mogesen so you had Olympic silver medalists there, you had Ivanov, Sosnov European champion, so a lot of players put value on it. Yeah. I think all of a sudden we can see that the story of us have just taken the foot off the gas a little bit and just gone into cruise mode. I think they know this one is uh, theirs for the taking. It'll be interesting. Mark the, the amount of matches that these girls have won the third game on, and that it kind of goes to uh, show, and it's something that you know a lot of nations are putting a value on now is the physical side of the game, the strength and conditioning work, the physiology. It's not no longer just about the tactics and about the yeah. raw Bampton skills. It's about be being an athlete, and that's probably why these girls have been recognised in their country as one of the best female athletes, not only in Bampton, but across all of the sports. Of course, when you're, when you're physically strong, it also helps, you. it affects you mentally. It, it, you know, when you're feeling fresh, you choose to play the correct shot at the right time. Whereas if you're tired and physically drained, you tend to make the wrong, uh, the wrong decisions. So in 45 minutes, Dan, it's match point, championship point for the Stoivers. And there it is, the error coming from the Danes in the end. Comfortable third game, as we pretty much predicted. Stoivers powering, powering their way through to the title. 21-9 in the third and uh, value for that Dan. Yeah, that was a very good win for the Stoivas very comfortable in the third game excellent to see the Danes fight back in the second and make it an interesting match so it was a, it was a great match uh, great to see it going to three games but there was only going to be one winner in, a, in a, the final game so, was, so we've got men's doubles coming up next and uh, that's set to be an exciting match